Kramer's rule and finding an inverse of A. And so this is now, we're back to AX equals B, solving a problem. We know B, we know A, we're trying to find out what X is. We're only working on N by Ns, and this is for square matrices. And somehow determinants are going to help us here. So that's peculiar. All right. All right, so the monks are going to lead us through this one. The ones that are still, still alive, of course. Um, uh, or, you know, able to talk properly. So let's see. So let's say try this for three by three matrices. Let's do this strange thing. We've got, let's imagine we have a three by three and you can, we'll be able to see it works for n by n's. Um, let's take the identity matrix and then replace the first column by x. Go on. Be crazy. Do it. So we do that and then we multiply through. This is abstract. Uh, so the way this works right is a times the first column gives you the first column of the result. These are, of course, matrices. We're not talking about determinants. So it comes in here. A times the second column will be the new second column. And A times that last column will be the last column here. All right. Well, we've chosen X. X is a solution to AX equals B. So A times X is B. So we replace that. This just says take the, grab the first column of A. Oh, sorry, the second column of A. All right, zero of the first column, zero of the third column, one of the second column. And this says I want the third column of A. A3, A2, B. So we're going to call this thing uh, capital B1. So it's A with the first co column replaced, replaced by uh, B from AX equals B. So strange business. All right, so we can do this uh, for the other columns. So let's take out the second column of the identity and replace it with X. Uh, and we'll just return, it'll look mostly like A, right? It's A times mostly the, the, the identity matrix, so it looks mostly like A. But the second column is now B. And in the third case, we'll have X in our third column. It'll look mostly like A. A1, A2, the first two columns of A. And then the last column, A3, will be replaced by uh, the vector B. <coughs> okay, great. Thank you, monks. Then they whisper take determinants. Okay, so let's go back here and take the determinant of this thing. We know, right, it's a product. So the determinant of a product is product of a determinant. So we've got determinant of A, and then determinant of this blob here, which is mostly identity matrix with X1, X2, X3 here. Hmm. And then what we call B1, right, is on the right-hand side. So it's A with the first column re replaced by um, B, right, from AX equals B. So we've, we call these B2 and B3. And in general, B7 would be A replaced with, with, with the seventh column replaced by B. You can think about this. If you use row reduction on the transpose, so you could do the trans, or you can do column reduction if you're really feeling advanced, then let's, let's see it like this. You can use this multiple of this row to get rid of anything here. You can use a multiple of this row to get rid of anything here. So we can do some row operations. And we'll just end up with, because these are zeros, x1 here, 0, 0. So it'll be, look, it'll just be x1, the first entry of x in the solution. So the determinant of A times the first entry of the solution is the determinant of B1. And so you get a similar thing. If you take the determinant here, you just get x2. Determinant of this one, you just get x3. And you flip them all around. And so the first... Part of the solution, x1, is the determinant of this b1 beast divided by a. x2 is the determinant of b2 divided by the determinant of a. And x3 is the determinant of b3 divided by the determinant of a. So we've just solved ax equals b. Yeah. Um, but monsters are coming. It's scary. It's a bad time. All right, so that's, that's not going to work out for us. Um, our little power pack thing is wearing off pretty quickly. So let's quickly get off this page before we get eaten. Um, so X, and we'll do it for an N by N. Uh, the solution to X, the solution to X equals B is X equals, and so the, each one has a determinant A sitting on it, so we'll pull that out the front. Determinant of B1, B2, da, 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 BN, where each of these Bs, right, BJ is uh, the matrix A with column J replaced by uh, the original B. Okay, so that's actually a formula. Wow. That's actually, this is a formula. It solves our problem. It's 
it's not something we will use in general because it only works for n by n. Computing determinants is really, really awfully slow. This is this isn't so bad. I mean, you can use that for the normal equations, but still. Um, let me write that. Okay, for normal equations. That's new, 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 new. Normal equations. Uh, it's slow to compute these determinants. This is factorial business, right? 17 by 17s have 17, 16 by 16s, and they have 16 by 15, 15s each. Ugh. And you have to recompute it for each B, right? So we'd have to put a new B in through here and start all over again. So main use is theoretical, or, or for maybe two by three by threes, say, four by fours. But it's 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 not a bad thing. So it's going to lead us to one other result, and let's do that. So this is just a good thing to know. It's a famous result. Um, and um, it's pretty cool. So it's a surprise for sure. I think it's surprising. So let's use it to do some good, as usual. Um, so let's solve. So the monks nudge us again. They say, well, let's solve some very specific problems. Let's solve these ones. And uh, the notation may get a little confusing here. So there's a. Um, now there are three x's, and they solve these different. Uh, B equations, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, which looks spectacularly like the uh, three vectors of the identity matrix, right? Or I hat, J hat, and K hat. So if we have these solutions and we put them together into a matrix, we're going to take this one, this one, and this one, stack them next to each other, multiply it from the left by A, so we'll get A times X1, A times X2, A times X3. They solve these equations, so this is... 1, 0, 0, AX2 is 0, 1, 0, and AX3 is 0, 0, 1. So it's the identity matrix. So if we have an inverse, if A exists, uh, the inverse exists, this must be it. So it's the solution to these uh, three equations, in general, N of them. There'll be N of these things, and there will be the, uh, the N columns of the identity matrix. So let's let's kind of push on with this because we're potentially, so if we can solve this in a simple way, we're going to find a formula for the inverse of A. It's pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's, we, we now have a method for doing this for N by N's, Kramer's rule. So uh, we'll go back to our example, 110322212 and find its inverse. So we'll solve the, this one first, and we'll just call it x. We'll just solve this in general with, with, we'll use Kramer's approach. And we're going to set it up for this problem. Uh, so, and we have this formula now, right? So the solution is one divided by the determinant of a, and the entries in the solution are these determinants where it's a with the first column replaced by b, a with the second column replaced by b, and A with the third column replaced by B. And our B here is just 1, 0, 0. So let's take our matrix. Here it is. B1 then is uh, his A. Everything looks the same. And we've put 1, 0, 0 here. Here's B2. Everything looks the same, except the second column is just 1, 0, 0. And here's A um, with the third column replaced 1, 0, 0. Now we know something about computing determinants that we're trying to get to determinants uh, that makes this easier we've got a lots of zeros here lots of zeros here and lots of zeros here and you see you could use row operations to actually create zeros here with that or column operations make zeros here make zeros here make it really clear that this is just this the determinant of this whole thing is uh, one times the cofactor associated with it which is really built around the determinant of this thing one times its cofactor, which is built around this minor matrix, M12, it's 0, 2, 2, 2. Uh, the cofactor there is minus 1, because this is a part of the checkerboard that has a minus 1. Determinant of 0, 2, 2, 2, right. All right, so let's leave that up for a second. But we can see 
that these these because we've set such special uh, this is such a special b that the cofactors are popping up. Right, the determinant of b one is the cofactor of entry a one one. The determinant of b two is the cofactor associated with this point because there's a one here. There's a one there. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Hope that makes sense. Hmm. Right, the determinant of a matrix is the dot product in general. Dot product, we could go we go down here, we take this because it's full of zeros. So it's the dot product of this vector with the cofactors that sit here, here, and here. And we don't have to worry about these two. So it's a dot it's just really one times that cofactor. 1 times that cofactor, 1 times that cofactor. And because the 1s are there, we know the determinant of B1 is just C11. The determinant of B2 is just C12. The determinant of B3 is just C13. So we have our solution. We can stick them in. So it's cofactor 11, cofactor 12, cofactor 13. So this is actually the uh, top row of C, the cofactor matrix. This is the middle row. Right, so if we did 0, 1, 0, you can go through it, or 0, 0, 1, um, we'd go get the cofactors running across the matrix in the middle column, and if we did 0, 0, 1, we'd get the cofactors running across the bottom. Middle row of C, and this is the bottom row. And this would work for n by n's, much more much richer and bigger, but this is the plan. So the inverse of A, we're just going to stick these things together because they're doing what we want. They're creating the, the, if we put this solution here, this solution here, this solution here, we know they give us A times them gives us 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's her identity. So let's, each one of them has the term of A involved. So we have that at the front. Uh, so here's the first column, second column, third column, and as I said, it's the rows, actually, of the cofactor matrix. So the first column is the first row of the cofactor matrix, etc. That means we have a transpose. So the inverse of A is 1 divided by determinant multiplying the transpose of the cofactor matrix. That is bananas. Bananas. All right. Um, <clears throat> We've done these calculations, so we can figure this out. We've this is this is uh, this is the determinant of a, right, for our matrix, and this is the cofactor matrix transpose. Let's try it out. Right, where was it? We were back here. Right, we knew the determinant was two. We've got it here. Here's our cofactor matrix. And then we've taken the transpose. So 4, 4, minus 6, 4, 4, whoops. Um, that should be a minus 6. And then uh, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 2, 3. So it's lying, completely lying. Um, yeah, let's fix that up. And so we've got it. Let's check. Let's check. So it was kind of lying. I was lying. 4 minus 1, minus 1. I did do some of it. Okay, let's see. So uh, so that first row dot with this one, we get a four, zero, right? Four, zero, minus two, it's two. The next one is four, minus three, minus one, zero. Uh, four, minus two, minus two, zero. Let's do the bottom one and say this. So we've got minus six, plus two, plus six. So that's plus two. We'll do the middle one just to check that one works. 4, 0, minus 2. So 4 plus 0 minus 2. Again, 2. And then the others give you zeros. And there's a 1 over 2 out the front. Multiply through. Identity. So that is a pretty um, spectacular finding. We actually have a formula for the inverse of A. And it gives you some sense of how uh, messy it is. Uh, and also just the nature of what the inverse of A is. So A, right, A, A's entries um, are, in, are involved, but uh, 
you know, C11 is de depends on the original A matrix. It depends on these parts of A, right? So there's this horrible non-locality. So if this is a an n by n, you take out the first row and the first column of of A, and you compute the determinant of the rest of it, multiply it by minus one to the power of two, and that would give you the first cofactor um, here. So yeah, to find the inverse, you're multiplying a lot, many, many, many numbers together to you know, to uh, to create all of these entries. So it just is fundamentally a, a nasty business, and, and maybe that'll give you some sense of that as well. But computationally, you don't want to you don't want to do it. You know, if someone says here's a thousand by thousand matrix, invert it, your computer will explode or do bad things. Um, so yeah, so there's there are two parts here that we um, went through. So Kramer's rule. Just to reconnect, uh, we're solving a x equals b, and we found that x can be written as a formula, which is strange, right? We we haven't been anything like this all the way along. We've we've had methods for uncovering the formula, but here is or a solution. But here is an actual formula. Uh, it involves determinants. It involves n determinants here plus one. Horribly nasty things to calculate. They. Um, you could use, there'd be some redundancy, I suppose, but you have to start again. If someone gives you another B, you have to start again. So that's bad, but useful for small things. This guy did not get us bad luck. And uh, then we use that to find a formula for the inverse of A. And uh, yeah, there it is. Amazing. All right.